two are going to inflate their suits. That's okay. Got to go. Safety Council Entity Step 935 is complete. Safety copies. Console and Pack Console, step 1061, close out cruise AB 11. Safety copies. And safety, Pack copies. safety gives you 1062. And STM step 1063, terminate video. STM copies. And 1064. Steer for your checklist. Yeah, NTD Houston flight on uh, 212. Go ahead, flight. Yeah, we're ready to, per to perform 1047 uh, with your go. That's the firm you have a go. Copy that. We'll put that in work.
Ten to the Go ahead. Step ten seventy six complete. OTC CDR horizontal sync config is complete, and the uh, contingency abort yacht steer is enabled. Copy that. In CMTC, that's 10.42 and 10.44 complete. Copy. And PLT OTC, perform MPS helium reconfig. PLT, that's in work. Thank you, sir. Safety console into the I can give you 1062. And uh, can you verify your part of that? Stand by. That's affirmative. And EPD and FCP OTC. EPD, FCP. F1069 adjusts fuel cell loads between 250 and 290 amps. Copy. EPD copies. Copy, CMPC, that's 1049 through 1051. Copy. NTD Houston flight on 212. Go flight. I can give you step 1048. The BFS pre flight uplink load is complete. Copy. Thank you. CVFS, you copy? CVFS copies. SRO, NTD, the KSC area is clear for launch. SRO copies. On air to ground one, discontinue all non mandatory LDB traffic for remainder of count 1077. This is shuttle launch control, T minus 10 minutes, 30 seconds and counting. OTC CFCP. Payload Director Bill Dowdell is preparing to conduct a final poll of the principal payload management team members during the upcoming final hold. Coming up will be a verification of the solid rocket booster hydraulic power unit levels. And right now we are you verified 1074, 1074. just one minute away from entering the last planned built-in hold in the countdown. The flow rate of conditioned air fed into the orbiter's payload bay has been reduced, verified to be about 180 pounds per minute. Verification the countdown clock will hold as planned. Yeah, could you give me a status of your constraints list, please? Yes, sir. We still have uh, two open items. Um, 
uh, the right ohms item that we were tracking earlier and uh, the ET debris item, so which are paper at this point, and we'll be closing those and clearing them off the list shortly. Yeah, they've been dispoed, and uh, so it's simply a paperwork issue at this stage, right? Yes, sir, that's correct. Okay, very good. Super tenor to range operations verifies the range is green. Going now into the hold in five, four, three, two, one. T minus nine minutes and holding. Countdown clock is at T minus nine minutes and holding. Duration of hold will be 40 minutes and 28 seconds. As we heard, this will be a 40 minute, 28 second hold. This is a variable hold to match up with the targeted launch time and the position of the International Space Station. And any unresolved issues can be addressed at this time. And as we heard, the uh, two items that uh, were open are just a matter of closing paper right now. Also, we'll be verifying that the uh, ground launch sequencer is ready to take control of the countdown in the last nine minutes. The ground launch sequencer will monitor over a thousand different parameters during the last nine minutes to make sure that they don't fall out of any predetermined limits or red lines. All personnel in the firing room have now switched over to the same communications channel, and everyone in firing room 4 will be on that channel from now through launch. MPF. Very shortly, our launch director, Mike Leinbach, will be verifying with our shuttle weather officer, Kathy Winters, that the weather conditions and the forecast meet the launch commit criteria. And right now we have uh, confirmation from the shuttle training aircraft and from our shuttle weather officer that the uh, cloudiness in the area is scattering out and we're approaching the uh, upper edge of that cloudiness in any event. Right now we're going to go to the Johnson Space Center to Mission Control in Houston. GLIS and Houston. And Receive an update from Kyle Herring on the status and readiness of Mission Control to okay, support the flight of Endeavor after liftoff occurs this morning. Our cameras are green, and if you're ready for the fill-ins, I'll give them to you now. I'm ready to copy. Okay, long range north, eight. Well, thanks, George, and good morning from NASA's Johnson Space Center. This is Mission Control Houston at T-minus nine minutes and holding. The ascent team has been on console since 3 o'clock this morning, and today is led by Flight Director Richard Jones, who's overseeing his fifth launch. Handling communications with the crew aboard Endeavour is uh, astronaut Barry Wilmore with Lee Archambault serving as the interface with uh, astronaut Rick Sturko, who is flying weather reconnaissance around the Kennedy Space Center in a modified Gulfstream aircraft known as the Shuttle Training Aircraft, or STA. The flight control team is monitoring all systems aboard the space shuttle along with the launch team at KSC and uh, has just notified the flight director it is ready to support the 25th and final launch of Endeavour this morning. 19 years ago to the day that Endeavour landed safely in California to end its maiden voyage in 1992. Uh, the ascent team has spent the majority of its shift monitoring orbiter systems and evaluating the weather conditions at the launch site in the event an emergency return to the shuttle landing facility is required. The team also evaluates weather at contingency runways in Spain and France. Presently, conditions are favorable to support an overseas landing if one becomes necessary during the launch phase. Because Endeavour is launching into a 51.6 degree inclination, essentially on a northeasterly trajectory from the Kennedy Space Center, the primary transoceanic abort landing site is Zaragoza in Spain, with Marone, Spain, and Istris in France available as alternate TAL sites uh, as well. Once Endeavour lifts off and clears the fixed service structure, its onboard guidance software will command a maneuver of the orbiter to a heads-down position, putting it on the proper course and trajectory to achieve its desired orbit.
At main engine cutoff, Endeavour will be in a 136 by 36 statute mile orbit. And about 30 minutes later, that orbit will be refined using the twin orbital maneuvering system engines, placing the orbiter in a 202 by 141 statute mile altitude for on-orbit operations. Today's launch of Endeavour actually serves as the first in a series of rendezvous burns designed to allow the orbiter to catch up with the International Space Station. Docking is scheduled for 6.15 Eastern Time Wednesday morning. At launch time, the space station at an altitude of 220 statute miles will be located southeast of Halifax, Nova Scotia. 73 paces from the shuttle, shuttle flight control room resides a team overseeing operations aboard the International Space Station. That team currently is being overseen by Flight Director Royce Renfrew. After Endeavour's launch and about 30 seconds into the flight, the three main engines will be throttled back to lessen the effects of the dense lower atmosphere on the orbiter. Less than a minute later, the shuttle will have accelerated to a speed of 3,620 miles per hour at the point where the twin solid rocket boosters burn out and separate at 2 minutes 3 seconds. Once in orbit, Endeavour's three main engines will be shut down at the eight and a half minute point, followed just a few seconds later by the separation of the large external fuel tank. All continues to go smoothly here in Mission Control with flight controllers standing by to take over control of Endeavour and the STS-134 mission at solid rocket booster ignition. George, we'll send it back to you now in the firing room for the remainder of Endeavour's launch count at T minus nine minutes and holding this is Mission Control, Houston. 12 is complete, 11, 13, not perform. This is Shuttle Launch Control, T minus nine minutes in holding. We have 34 minutes remaining in this planned built-in hold. We're not working any issues in the countdown. Weather is still green at this time. TBC, NTD? NTD, CLHY, I'm aware. Okay, very good, thanks. Mission STS-134 is the 25th and final flight for Endeavour and the second to last flight for the Space Shuttle program. Here now is a look back at this vehicle's impressive flight accomplishments. Okay, it's the pass in BFS. <laughs> Space Shuttle Endeavour, born out of the loss of the Space Shuttle Challenger in 1986, represented a commitment to continuing America's human spaceflight program. The nation's decision to build Endeavour set the stage for dramatic missions to come. The last of five orbiters to be built for spaceflight, Endeavour was named in a national competition by elementary and secondary school students after the 18th century sailing vessel commanded by Captain James Cook. Construction of Endeavour began with its contract award on July 31, 1987 to replace Challenger, which was lost 73 seconds after launch on January 28, 1986. Endeavour was outfitted with many safety improvements, including a drag chute to be deployed post-landing and nose wheel steering to improve wear on the tires during rollout on the runway. Additionally, Endeavour's plumbing was designed for a state-of-the-art addition allowing for longer stays in space. Endeavour was delivered to NASA's Kennedy Space Center from its Palmdale, California construction site in May 1991. When Endeavour completes its final mission, it will have traveled more than 115 million miles during 25 trips to space. It will have carried 139 different people into orbit. Although Endeavour was the final space shuttle to be built, its career has been one of firsts, and its legacy will be one of opening humanity's greatest eye on the universe and expanding the space frontier for nations around the world. For an out-of-this-world space laboratory. Houston, Endeavour, roll program. Roger, roll, Endeavour. Right now we have about 31 minutes remaining in this plan built-in hold at T-minus 9 minutes.
and the team is not working uh, any issues weather still uh, green Endeavour's 16-day mission will deliver the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer 2, or AMS, to the International Space Station. Along with AMS, Endeavour will also fly spare parts on the Express Logistics Carrier 3, or ELC-3, and the mission will feature four spacewalks to perform maintenance work and install new components. These are the last scheduled spacewalks by shuttle crew members for the Space Shuttle program. But now let's take a closer look at the mission. The crew of Space Shuttle Endeavour's STS-134 mission will deliver the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer 2, or AMS, and the Express Logistics Carrier 3, or ELC-3, to the International Space Station. The AMS experiment is a state-of-the-art particle physics detector that will help advance knowledge of the universe and its origin. AMS will be attached to the station's S3 truss segment. The ELC-3, containing two S-band antennas, a high-pressure gas tank, spare parts for the two-armed robot Dexter, will be attached to the station's P-3 truss segment for future use. During Endeavour's planned two-week flight, crew members also will make four spacewalks to upgrade and equip parts of the space station's exterior. The STS-134 mission is the final scheduled flight for Endeavour. Right now, most of the launch team is just looking at their systems, catching up on any uh, things which aren't uh, completely closed, but uh, there's no significant uh, issue in work. So that uh, we do expect to come out of the T-minus nine minute hold on time in about 29 minutes. If uh, weather permits, and right now weather is continuing to trend in our favor. At T minus nine minutes and holding, this is shuttle launch control.
This is Shuttle Launch Control, T-minus nine minutes in holding. We have 25 minutes remaining in this planned 40-minute built-in hold. Once again, the Endeavour will dock with the space station on Wednesday at about 6.15 in the morning Eastern Time and will remain docked to the station until Monday, May 30th at about 11.53 in the evening. Once we come out of this hole, there are several major milestones that remain. The uh, ground launch sequencer, as we said, will be taking over control of the countdown for the final nine minutes. At seven minutes, 30 seconds, the orbiter access arm retraction will be performed. And at T-minus five minutes, Potter Greg Johnson will start up the orbiter's auxiliary power units. A gimbal check of the orbiter's aerosurfaces, or flight controls, will occur at T-minus three minutes, 55 seconds. And then a switch over to internal power on the spaceship occurs at T-minus three minutes, 30 seconds. We'll see the three main engines go through their steering checks, a gimbal check at T-minus three minutes, 25 seconds. And then the gaseous oxygen vent hood, called the beanie cap, will be retracted at about 2 minutes 55 seconds before launch. And that will be followed by pressurizing a liquid hydrogen tank at a minute 57 seconds before launch. That takes us up to where the ground launch sequencer will hand off to Endeavour's onboard computers at T-minus 31 seconds. And the final command will be coming at T-minus 6.6 .6 seconds to ignite Endeavour's three main engines. And the uh, ground launch sequencer get a chance, gets a chance to uh, vote on the readiness for main engine start at T-minus 10 seconds. It uh, must agree with the uh, onboard computers that we're ready to ignite the main engines. And then uh, at that point, the uh, onboard computers on Endeavour can actually cut off the countdown at any point up until uh, solid rocket booster ignition. Once the uh, main engines on Endeavour ignite, they will begin to consume propellant at the rate of a thousand gallons per second. The uh, solid rocket boosters, however, they will be providing 80% of the thrust required for the space shuttle during the first two minutes before they separate. Right now, Greg Sterko in the Weather Reconnaissance Aircraft, Shuttle Training Aircraft, is taking another reconnaissance flight uh, around the immediate vicinity of Kennedy Space Center and Cape Canaveral, uh, watching this uh, area of cloudiness that is uh, gradually breaking up, but uh, want to be sure that uh, that will not be a uh, factor in our launch today.
When the shuttle lifts off, we'll have a very up-close view of the shuttle coming from two long-range optical tracking sites. One is located on the Cape Canaveral National Seashore, north, north of the uh, launch pads, and there's another at Patrick Air Force Base, just south of Cocoa Beach. They have 200-inch uh, and 400-inch lenses for uh, film and high-definition video. Houston Flight NTD on 212. NTD, Houston Flight, go ahead. All right, any changes to either our launch window or our lock stream back hold times? No changes. All right, very good. And for all personnel, just a reminder, we are at the in-plane, and our uh, T-0 time is 12.56.28, and that gives us a preferred lock stream back of 3 minutes 49 seconds. Station calling on 118. You're on 212. KSC SMA. And also providing a highly detailed image of the shuttle is a 50 foot C band radar, which is located just north of. Complex 39 on the Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge. That will be working together with some X band radars on the solid rocket booster retrieval ships. So a detailed computer graphic will be generated that uh, can identify anything that comes off the shuttle during flight. This is shuttle launch control, 14 minutes, 30 seconds remaining in this planned built and hold at T minus nine minutes. And joining us uh, here at the console and firing room four is Pete Nekolinko. He's the assistant launch director today. And we thought we would uh, ask him a little bit about how the countdown has been uh, going and maybe some of the things that we've worked. Um, Pete, it, it appears to have been fairly quiet, but the uh, the, the 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 tile issue on the hatch. I don't think that's ever something we've worked before, is it? Good morning, George. As a matter of fact, we did work a fairly similar issue uh, 
for the STS-133 uh, launch. So uh, we developed some recent uh, experience in working a, a minor chip in a, in a slurry repair, such as what we executed today. And fortunately, the closeout crew, uh, as is usual, was right on the scene and took care of it in very short order. And we've got uh, a clean bill of health with our, uh, with our side hatch tile. Well, other than that, I think uh, we did uh, work too many issues since we picked up the countdown, have we today? It, it has been relatively smooth. Uh, we have had a, a couple of uh, just uh, minor nits, but uh, the launch team dispositioned them with no issues. And uh, at this point, the uh, the launch team, the vehicle, and the crew is all ready to go. Uh, we were watching uh, some weather. Uh, there was a, uh, some band of uh, clouds uh, approaching from the west, but uh, we've... Uh, had the uh, weather aircraft approach and take uh, various looks and sees, and uh, the uh, clouds uh, appear to pose no issue. So uh, we're looking good as far as that's concerned. And so we do have a forecast go and, a, and an observed go weather forecast for launch at this time. How have our uh, heaters performed? Uh, the APU heaters, I'm, I'm uh, pleased to say, uh, perform nominally. There are no issues at all with them, and uh, they're right on the mark. And so... Uh, we declared that certainly a victory. Well, Pete, I guess uh, it looks like we're we're there. We've had uh, some challenges over the last couple of weeks, but we certainly did uh, show that we could we could manage that. How, how would you characterize how the team has had to meet with this challenge over the last couple of weeks? Well, uh, this is just an amazing uh, combined team that we have here, and uh, and as usual, uh, they faced the challenge, uh, tackled it. Uh, with all the vim and vigor that uh, that we're known for and, uh, and and resolved it and we're back in a ready to launch mode and I'm proud to say that we're we uh, expect to launch here shortly well Pete thanks very much and uh, I guess we're uh, what a little more than 20 minutes or so away from a launch so uh, congratulations on helping to bring us to uh, this point in the countdown and we're looking forward to lift off as you are absolutely thanks George 11 minutes, 25 seconds remaining in this hold at T minus 9 minutes. This is Shuttle Launch Control. This is Shuttle Launch Control, 10 minutes now remaining in this plan built and hold at T-minus 9 minutes. Just about 3 minutes, NASA Test Director Jeff Spaulding will be giving instructions to the launch team for the final 9 minutes of the countdown. And our launch director, Mike Leinbach, will also be polling his uh, management team and we'll also hear the orbiter test conductor Mark Taffet from United Space Alliance closing the uh, final loops with the crew and uh, giving them a send-off on a good flight. The uh, 
uh, blinds here in the firing room on firing room four in the back of the room now are being raised since we are anticipating an on-time launch here in the next 15 minutes or so. And tension all personnel, we have about eight and a half minutes left of hold time here at T minus nine minutes and we're still tracking no issues at this point. ISL, JRPS, and Houston Flight perform the L-15 recorder activation. ISL? ISL. And JRPS? JRPS. And Houston Flight. We will put that in work. MS-1 and MS-4 OTC, activate your V-10 recorders, please. V-10 recorder activation in work. Eight fifty six twenty eight, our targeted launch time. Jeff Spaulding about to pull his team. And attention all personnel, this is the NTD conducting the launch status check. Verify ready to resume count and go for launch. OTC? OTC is go. TBC? Thank you, please just go. TTC? TTC is go. LPS? LPS is go. Houston flight? Houston flight is go. Mila? Mila go. STM? STM is go. Safety console? Safety console is go. SPE? SPE is go. LRD? LRD is go. SRO? <laughs> SRO is go. CDR? Yes. CDR and the crew of Endeavor go. Copy all. And launch director, NTD, our launch team is ready to proceed at this time. Okay. And this is SRO go. go. You have range clear to launch. And SRO, you're on 212. And NTD, your, your poles go. Is that affirmative? That is affirmative. We are all go. Okay. Copy that. KC, Chief Processing Engineer, verify no constraints to launch. No constraints. Thank you, Steve. KC, Safety and Mission Assurance. KC, Safety and Mission Assurance is go. Thank you, Dave. Payload launch manager. Like space station process and TPO. Thank you, Bill. Range weather. Weather has no constraints for launch. Thank you, Kathy. And ops manager. Mike, things look real good today. Thanks to your team for getting us back here. Uh, your good launch endeavor. Good. Thank you, sir. Endeavor launch director, air to ground one. 
Okay, Mark, looks like a great day to uh, launch Endeavor for the final time. So on behalf of the thousands of proud Americans who have been part of her journey, good luck, Godspeed, and we'll see you back here June 1st. Thank you, sir. Uh, on this uh, final flight of Space Shuttle Endeavor, we want to thank all the tens of thousands of dedicated employees that have put their hands on this incredible ship and dedicated their lives to the Space Shuttle program. As Americans, we endeavor to build a better life than the generation before, and we endeavor to be a united nation. In these efforts, we are often tested. This mission represents the power of teamwork, commitment, and exploration. It is in the DNA of our great country to reach for the stars and explore. We must not stop. To all of the millions watching today, including our spouses, children, family, and friends, we thank you for your support. Outstanding words, Mark. Thank you, sir. And to do that, you are clear to launch Endeavor. Copy that. Thank you. minutes and 15 seconds away from picking up the countdown. NTD ISO recorder activation complete. Copy ISO. Our NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden has joined us here in the firing room. As has Kennedy Space Center Director Bob Cabana. Ninety seconds from picking up the countdown. Picking up the count in one minute. One minute. Thirty seconds from picking up the count. Picking up the count in ten seconds. The countdown clock will resume on my mark. Three, two, one, mark. T minus nine minutes and counting. CLS auto sequence has been initiated. Round launch sequence are now controlling. Over a thousand different parameters will be monitored and verified in the next nine minutes. The handoff to Endeavor's onboard computers will occur at T minus 31 seconds, and at that point, that handoff will not occur if there is anything that is not go for launch. Connect essential buses to your fuel cells for your checklist. PLT, that's in work. The orbiter access arm will be retracted in about 20 seconds. Go 
for orbiter access on recheck. Endeavor OTC, it's your final voyage. This is both a sad and proud moment for your launch team and for America, but your legacy will live on. Mission success with AMS, a truly international effort. Godspeed and see you back in a couple of weeks. Endeavor copies, thanks for the words. Appreciate it. Orbiter test conductor Mark Taffet from the United Space Alliance. Wishing the crew well. Six minutes, 28 seconds. T-minus six minutes and counting. OTC, PLT, APU pre-start is complete with three great talkbacks. Happy all. In about 30 seconds, we'll be terminating the liquid oxygen replenishment. T minus five minutes, five seconds. JLS is go for orbiter APU start. PLT, OTC, perform APU start. PLT, that's in work. PDR, OTC, reconfigure heaters. Get a reconfigure heart. Starting the orbiter aerosurface profile test in just a moment. JLS is go for approach sequence four. Minus three minutes, 30 seconds, checking main engine steering. The main engines now are in the start position. Pressurizing the liquid oxygen tank. For ET LO2 pressurization. I'll now be retracting the gaseous oxygen vent arm. PLT, OTC, clear caution and warning memory, verify no unexpected errors. Caution and warning memory is clear. No unexpected. 
unexpected error. Copy that. Endeavor OTC, close and lock your visors. Initiate O2 flow. Endeavor and work. T minus two minutes and counting. TLS is go for ET, LH2, pressurization. sound suppression water system. liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen fill and drain valves. Standing by for the handoff to Endeavor's onboard computers. T minus 31 seconds and the handoff has occurred. 25. Firing chain is armed. How suppression water system is armed. Go for maintenance to start. Eight, seven, six, four, three, two, zero, and lift off for the final launch of Endeavor. Expanding our knowledge, expanding our lives in space. Houston Endeavor, World Program. Roger roll, Endeavour. Houston is now controlling. Endeavour beginning to uh, pull over onto its uh, back. The roll program underway as uh, Endeavour begins the heads down position on course for a 51.6 degree, 136 by 36 statute mile orbit. now throttling down as Endeavour uh, passes through the area of maximum dynamic pressure on the vehicle in the lower atmosphere. Approaching one minute into the flight. Endeavour, go at throttle up. Roger, go at throttle up. Endeavour's three uh, main engines now back at uh, full throttle, all uh, three engines in good shape. Endeavor's already uh, traveling 1,300 miles per hour at an altitude of 11 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, now 12 miles. At liftoff, uh, Endeavor fully fueled, uh, weighed four and a half million pounds. It's already lost half that weight in propellant now, burned that weight. Next event is burnout and separation of the twin solid rocket boosters. Uh, that upcoming here shortly at the uh, two minute, three second point, those boosters are burning 11,000 pounds of fuel per second. And standing by for separation of the solid rocket boosters. The onboard guidance system has done its job of settling out any dispersions introduced at booster separation. The uh, orbiter is now traveling 3,200 miles per hour, downrange 50 miles, altitude 37 miles. All systems in good shape. Three good uh, hydraulic systems, auxiliary power units, and fuel cells. The fuel cells providing electrical power to all of the systems. 
Endeavour can reach uh, a TAL site in the event of a single engine failure. However, all three are in good shape. Space Shuttle Endeavour sailing into fair winds on its final historic voyage. This view looking down the external fuel tank, uh, the orbiter there on the top, as uh, Endeavour continues to power its way into orbit, traveling 4,000 miles per hour downrange, 90 miles, altitude 50 miles. Three minutes, 15 seconds into the flight. All three main engines still uh, looking in, uh, in good shape, hydraulic systems and electrical systems on board the orbiter. Endeavour, negative return. Roger, negative return. Endeavour can no longer return to the Kennedy Space Center in the event of an engine failure now, but all three are still in good shape, as are all of the other systems aboard the orbiter. Uh, quiet here in Mission Control as a team of flight controllers watches, watches over all of the systems. Four minutes, 20 seconds into the flight, Endeavour's traveling 5,500 miles per hour. Altitude now 63 miles, traveling downrange 186 miles, or about 335,000 feet in altitude. Environmental and Control uh, Systems Officer here reporting a good flash evaporator system providing uh, cooling to all of the avionics equipment aboard the vehicle. Traveling into space on the forward flight deck is Commander Mark Kelly and Pilot Greg Johnson. Between and behind them is Flight Engineer Roberto Vittori. And rounding out the flight deck crew is Mike Fink. Endeavor, press to ATO. Roger, press to ATO. Endeavour can reach orbit on two engines should one fail at this point. However, all three are still uh, performing as planned. Down on the mid-deck of Endeavour, Drew Foistel and Greg Chamatoff. Foistel headed to the International Space Station for the first time. Vittori and Fink making their first voyage on the space shuttle after uh, flying to the International Space Station aboard uh, Soyuz spacecraft previously. Endeavour, single engine, Ops 3. Roger, single engine, Ops 3. Now that call indicates that Endeavour could reach a transatlantic abort site on one engine if it lost two of the three, although all three are still in good shape. Five minutes, 50 seconds into the flight. Endeavour, press D'Amico and single engine, Zaragoza, 104. Several calls there. Endeavour can reach a safe orbit on two engines now. The guidance system is controlling the engines to roll Endeavour to a heads-up position to optimize the air-to-ground communications through the satellite network. Flight controllers reporting to Flight Director Richard Jones are in good shape. Your shutdown plan is nominal. Copy. Shutdown plan is nominal. For Mark, you're go the plus X, go the pitch. Roger. Go for the plus X, go for the pitch. Endeavour, single engine press 104. Roger. Single engine press 104. Endeavour can reach orbit on one engine should two fail. However, all three are still in good shape. The three main engines are uh, flowing fuel through their uh, power systems at a rate uh, equivalent to draining an average backyard swimming pool in 25 seconds. Seven minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Altitude 64 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 630 miles. Endeavour is traveling 13,500 miles per hour. We're now seeing uh, throttling on the three main engines to maintain the uh, 3G or three times gravity load on the vehicle and the crew.
engines at 82% uh, of rated thrust. Eight minutes into the flight, the next uh, activity is a main engine cutoff. That's expected to be commanded at 21 seconds. And main engine cutoff has been confirmed. Flight Dynamics reporting a nominal main engine cutoff. And separation from the external tank. Endeavour's Commander Mark Kelly now uh, firing the thruster jets to position the orbiter for uh, photography of the external we tank. We did see a nominal MECO. Ohms 1 is not required. Copy. Nominal MECO. Ohms 1 not required. The pitch-up maneuver will allow uh, for some photography of uh, the external tank as it falls away from the orbiter uh, that uh, to uh, capture images for the uh, imagery analysis team to uh, evaluate uh, any loss of foam uh, from the tank during the launch phase of the vehicle. The residual items floating away there, uh, typically particles of ice that accumulated on the back end of the orbiter during the uh, tanking process while it was sitting on the launch pad. By all indications, all of the flight control uh, team uh, here in Mission Control uh, reporting normal ascent calls all the way uphill um, uh, from this early standpoint, uh, there were no issues at all with any of the systems aboard Endeavour uh, on the way uh, into space. Uh, Endeavour now safely is into space. The next big, act big activity will be the um, orbital maneuvering system engine burn uh, to more, cir more circularize uh, Endeavour's orbit. Currently, the vehicle's in a 136 by 36 statute mile orbit, very highly elliptical and that will be refined um, here in the next 30 minutes to more circularize the orbit on its way to the International Space Station. That link up with the ISS scheduled for early Wednesday morning, about 6.15 in the morning is the current targeted uh, docking time of Endeavour uh, to the ISS. Again, a, uh, a fairly uh, routine ascent. All of those calls, abort calls uh, to the flight director all the way uphill uh, were uh, fairly routine. There were no uh, anomalies discussed whatsoever on the way um, uh, uphill during today's launch. They're looking at uh, Richard Jones in the middle there. He is the ascent uh, flight director for STS-134. Barry Wilmore in the uh, near view, uh, serving as the spacecraft communicator. Lee Archambault just seating, sitting down there served as the interface uh, for uh, weather reconnaissance uh, with astronaut Rick Sturko, who was flying uh, shuttle training aircraft down at the Kennedy Space Center evaluating weather. And then at the top of the picture is Tony Sakachi. He served as the uh, weather flight director, and he also will be back uh, 14 days from now serving as the entry flight director for Endeavour's uh, final return home at the end of this mission. As uh, Endeavour flies. Endeavour Houston for Deltas to page 3 4 when you're ready. We are ready to copy. I'll give you your OMS 2 preliminary time for your TIG is 37 colon 00. Actually, I have no Deltas to 3 4. Tell only control, of course, will, I repeat, will be required. Copy. 
the uh, no deltas cam only control is required. Thirty seven decimal zero zero no two. That's a good read back endeavor. And Flight Director uh, Richard Jones getting a go from flight controllers for a shutdown of the auxiliary power units. Endeavor for Box, you are go for APU hide shutdown. Copy, go for APU hide shutdown. Those three uh, hydraulic systems performed perfectly going uphill. Uh, also, uh, the control of the heaters for the APUs, obviously the issue that delayed the launch a couple of weeks, uh, the APU heaters uh, working just fine aboard the vehicle. As is the uh, flash evaporator system, which provides uh, cooling to all of the avionics and electronics equipment aboard Endeavour uh, during ascent and until the payload bay doors are opened. The door uh, opening is um, scheduled to occur about an hour, hour and a half or so uh, into the uh, flight. Once the payload bay doors are opened, the uh, Flash evaporator system is bypassed, uh, which allows the radiators to be activated and uh, the cooling of uh, all of the systems during on-orbit uh, operations is uh, conducted through the radiators that line the payload bay doors. And mechanical systems officer reports a good shutdown of the auxiliary power units. Those are not required uh, for the on-orbit phase of the mission. They provide hydraulic power to the main engines uh, and also the aero surfaces. They will be required, obviously, for entry. One of those will be used uh, the day before landing for a checkout of the flight control surfaces and the um, uh, aero surfaces as well. Um, all of those will be checked out before entry, but the APUs now have done their job putting uh, Endeavour into orbit, uh, assisting with that. Uh, next up uh, will be a Ohms 2 burn. Two minutes to spreading. Copy, two minutes to spreading. The uh, spreading call is a nominal call. That's uh, basically what we do when we're going over Europe, so the S-band uh, communications system doesn't interfere with uh, telecommun telecommunications satellites. Also uh, reporting that that orbital maneuvering system, too, burned a more circularized Endeavour's orbit uh, upcoming um, at about 37 minutes uh, mission elapsed time. That's about uh, 20 minutes from now. Crew uh, now in the process of beginning to uh, transition the onboard uh, software to the post uh, ascent uh, stage. Crew is still in its ascent checklist. It'll transition to the uh, post insertion checklist about 35 minutes or so, mission elapsed time. Everything going very smoothly with uh, Endeavour's ascent post insertion activities on board. Uh, we'll head back down to Florida now for the uh, traditional uh, launch replays. Endeavour, we like your TIG. You are go to load.
Denver, Houston for box. When you get to MPS.
Com check on the handheld mic. Endeavor Houston, we have you loud and clear. Loud and clear, too, and uh, just standing by on the MPS power down. Are you ready for block three and block two in post assertion? We can start those early. You are go for both, Endeavor. Thanks and work. Endeavor, you ready for MPS power down? That's affirmative. Ready for that. And when you get there, box, we have no deltas to your ET umbilical door closure. Copy that. Endeavor, when convenient, you've got somebody near R11 lower. I need a uh, talk back check, please. Yeah, we've lost insight to the talk back for Supply Water Tank Charlie Inlet. If you could let us know what that says. Supply Water Tank Charlie Inlet is closed, Houston. Copy. The talk back's closed. Thank you. Okay, Endeavor, for the uh, Supply Water Tank Charlie Inlet, we'd like you to hold that switch to open until the talkback goes open and, and confirm it with us that the talkback does go open. Okay, in work, Houston. Hey, Houston, uh, we opened the Tank Charlie Inlet and the talkback says open. Good words, thanks. 